all truth is not kind to hear. There's a bitter truth as well as a sweet truth. Jesus said in John 8, 32, you shall know the truth. And there's one thing about the truth, it will make you free. And the first thing you need free is your mind. Shalom, 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 saints of the Most High, Yah. Glory to the King. Bless his holy, wonderful, and incredible and marvelous name. It's Yahshua Hamashiach, Jesus the Christ. That's what we're talking about, just in case you don't know. Welcome to the broadcast. You're on Blog Talk Radio. Uh, you're on the Straightway Truth Ministries with Elder Rufus. Uh, Straightway Truth Ministries is run by none other than Pastor Charles Dow, Jr., great man of Yah. Um, great example uh, for a wicked generation. Hallelujah. Glory to the King. I'm grateful uh, to be up under his ministry. I'm grateful to serve the Father uh, through serving in his ministry. I, I, I truly am. <laughs> Elder laughing a little bit. I'm, I'm, I'm getting uh, while the song was playing. 
a little um, introduction song. That beautiful song, ain't it? We win. Y'all understand them words? We win. The main reason why I got that song on there, I'm going to get back to what I was talking about. I know I digress a little bit, but I'll get back to it. Um, the main reason I had that song on there is not just because of the words in the chorus of We Win, but y'all listen to all those demons and all those devils that we got victory over, gossip, anxiety, depression, all that stuff. We got victory over that if we choose to walk in it. Hallelujah. Glory, glory, glory to the King. But, uh, yeah, I'm excited. I'm glad to be uh, here today like I am every first day. Um, greetings to all you uh, out there in Israel uh, and those that are not part of Israel but are here uh, for whatever reason you're here for. Spying on our liberties, uh, curiosity, knowledge driven, whatever. Whatever brought you this way, I'm grateful that the Father has put on your heart uh, to sit in and to... Uh, fellowship with us here and you know at the end of it hopefully you get some understanding and hopefully you get something that you can take from this that you can apply in your life that's going to actually help you walk out your faith to help you finish this race uh, of salvation because it's a race and you need to finish it those that endure to the end shall be saved so uh, we got work to do to get to salvation now that mind can be fully made up that nothing's going to knock you off course. A lot of us, well, let me not say it like that. A few of us, a few of us have made the decision in our hearts and in our minds that we ain't coming off this course. No shape, form, fashion, nothing is going to knock us off that course. I know for a fact I'm one of them people. I have made up in my mind that there is nothing here, nothing stop me from receiving the love of Yah. All right? I got my hands on that plow firmly, and I don't give a flying flip what's behind me. Hallelujah. Glory to the King. So I have a question, saints. I got a question. Israel, how many have made the decision to set their personal wills aside to follow the will of Yah? Anybody that was here last week, that was the burning question that I put before the saints. And I'm going to keep that before the saints, because if you look at, the teachings that have been going forth this week coming from the Straightway Truth Ministries. I'm not concerned about other ministries at this point. Oh, I, because I haven't found another one that's teaching the truth on this level. I just haven't, you know, uh, not that I'm opposed to other ministries because I'm not, you know, but uh, if they running this race and, and doing it greater than us, we would be more than happy to couple up with them and, 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 and assist them in going after the Father. We really would. I just ain't found another one out there yet. You know, and the father hadn't led me to another one. Let me put it that way, because I'd be lying and say I'm actually looking, you know, because I'm not. Uh, I understand what's been put before me. I understand the truth that is coming out of the mouth of the man of Yah that's jumping off the pages of my Bible. The understanding, the clarity that's coming forth in me now from the word actually being preached to me by a true Hebrew. Hallelujah. Man, it's something. I am starting to fall more and more and more in love with my heritage as the days go by. The Father is just opening up my heart. He's opening up my mind. He's showing me things, and I am appreciating what he's doing. And I'm hating this wicked, foul world more and more and more. Man, that devil plays so many tricks on your mind. It is a, it's just a literal shame. But the Bible did tell us he's down here like a roaring lion. That brother acting like a chicken with his head cut off because he knows he has but a short time left, you guys. Could you imagine being in that situation, you know, being thrusted out of glory, being sent here, and you just running around? You don't know when your time of torment is going to be up. You have no clue, no clue whatsoever when that day is going to be bloop and it's going to be over for you. Mm, but you do know this, if you're the Satan, you cannot connect again with the Father. You will never make it to Shemaim. You will never be a part of his people again because you are the father of lies. He is the author and the beginner of sin. That's what he is. He is the opposite of Yah. Mm. There's no hope, no salvation for him or anyone that serves him. Man, ain't you glad that you've been chosen to be 
a part of Israel. We talked about this yesterday. Oh, we talked about this in uh, Q&A and in fellowship. Uh, speaking of fellowship, boy, we had a great time here in Georgia. Let me say hi to some of the saints. Who we got in the room today? I know I'm digressing. I got a lot on my mind. Father will get us to what we need to get to. He'll get us there. Uh, bless you, Brother Steve. Hallelujah. Brother Will, bless you, Brother. Brother Word, Sister Brittany. Man, that's, Sister Brittany, man, that, that letter that Pastor read, man, that was just ripping my heart. Yes, I mean, because I see this every day, too, Sister Brittany. I'm out there. I'm still working in that world, Sister, and I see the foolish at 19. I see the foolish at 79. Just, just dumb as hell. That, I don't know what else to say. I heard that words from that 50 year old, that, that hypocrite. I don't want no virgin. Oh, no. Oh, absolutely not. Oh, my daughters. Oh, they better be virgin. You hypocrite. And I guarantee his daughter's loose as a goose. I guarantee they are. If not, they're going to be. Man, you got that kind of spirit over you. What else you expect going to happen to you? Unless they done cut themselves off from that book and got away from his foolish tale. That's just crazy, man. That's crazy. But bless y'all. Brother Chris, Sister Candace. Hallelujah. Man, it's good to see. Brother Vernon. Man, you didn't bother me today, brother. Hey, y'all, Brother Vernon woke me up today, man. Y'all send Brother Vernon about 100 text messages telling him, don't be waking y'all elder up when he's trying to get some rest. <laughs> I'm best with you, Brother Vernon. You know I'm calling you out, bro. <laughs> brother Vernon said, Elder, you were asleep. I said, I'm good, brother. No, nah, go back to sleep, Elder. I'll talk to you on the show. <laughs> brother, you know I always love to hear from you, though, brother. I will get up out of sleep for the saints all day, every day. But we had a great time here in Israel yesterday, here in Georgia. We really had an awesome time. Oh, out there for y'all? Oh, sorry. My wife handed me a letter. Uh, I guess they can't get chat out there. Well, we got chat in here. So, uh, But back to uh, uh, what I was talking about. We had an awesome time of fellowship here in Straightway, Georgia yesterday. Uh, we were honored and we were privileged to have Elder Frank and Sister Andrea and little Emma in the house. And, of course, we know Sister Andrea is with child. So uh, it was beautiful just to see her glowing face. And she just looks well, y'all. You know, some folk just look good pregnant. Sister Andrea is one of those people. She just looked good pregnant. Hallelujah. And she is encouraged. And, and Elder was encouraged. The family was encouraging. You just see growth in that family. You really do. You just see growth. You see that family as a unit just getting closer. And it's just like, man, you know, you know they're already tight, and you see them getting close. It's just encouraging to see it. Little Emma just growing. I mean, they picked her up one time. I said, man, she she about tall as you, Sister Andrew. And uh, they brought a, a, a beautiful new two new saints down with them uh, from that area that they live in over uh, uh, Savannah area over there in Georgia. Um, Sister Shelley and her son Quentin. And, boy, we had a great time with them. They were able to spend some time here and stay on the land with us and, and you know, uh, fellowship with us, eat with us, sleep with us. You know what I mean? They were just able to hang out and see what it's like, you know, for a weekend to be Hebraic, to be Hebrews. And it blessed them. It really, really did. And um, it blessed us to have them here. You know, Quentin's just a stand-up young brother. He really is. You know, I'm always impressed. There's two things that kind of impress me a lot. When I can meet an older man or an older individual that's not hard stone set in their ways, like an Elder Bill was. I know you all probably always know Elder, always bring up Elder Bill, because I loved Elder Bill. I still love Elder. You know what I mean? Elder was my brother. He was my elder. And I miss Elder. But it, it, it amazed me that Elder could be at his age, almost 70 years old, but not be stuck in his ways. You know, he, he, he was humble. He was meek. And he was willing to learn from anybody. didn't matter if you was an 8-year-old child or a or, or, or 40-year-old man. He would sit at your feet and receive that knowledge just as humble as a child. He really would. He was a great example of humbling yourself as a child. I used to tell Elder all the time, Elder Bill, Elder Bill, man, I, I need to, no, nah, Elder, no. He just cut me off, no, no. I'm not here to minister to you. I need to be ministered to, Elder. I'm sitting at your feet, brother. That's what he used to tell me all the time. Brother, he said to me like that. I'm at your feet, brother. I'm trying to get that wisdom the Father gave you. You got it. And, man, we just had such a good time. But I'm always impressed by that. Older older people, men, women, whatever, that ain't just so set in their ways through these years that they can still be taught. 
because most old people can't be taught. Let's just be real, y'all. Most old people, you can't tell them nothing. I'm just keeping it real. They know everything. They done been through everything, which they've been through some stuff. Don't get me wrong. But just because they're old and got gray hair don't necessarily mean they're walking in wisdom. And they can give you some wisdom that's going to help you in this walk. It don't necessarily mean that. Now, I think the father, he's given this ministry a pretty good balance. You know what I mean? We got children on the way, you know, a couple months old and in the womb. And we got people as old as 80-something, you know what I mean, close to 90. So he's given us a great balance. Uh, but that's impressive to me, the older people that aren't set in their ways. And then another thing that's impressive to me is young people. When I see young men, when I see young women that have shunned the things of this world and turned their lives over to the Father to seek his face and to uh, grow in the grace and the knowledge of him and to walk in his statutes and his commandments and his laws, that is impressive to me. That's extremely impressive to me. And, and I watch those people closely because I know that Satan wants to sift them like we I know he do. Some of us, our minds ain't changing, and we done already proved that not only to the, to the saints, but we done proved that to the Satan. So he know even though you claim to be in Israel, he got you. He know he got you if you ain't going to change your mind, and he can submit these wicked, vile images and thoughts to you, and you respond to them on a whim. You sway by every wind of doctrine. You, you control by every tear and every emotion. He know when he got you. He knows when he got you. And I'm not saying anything about emotions and tears. Nothing wrong with that. I'm just saying if you're swayed and you're dictated by it, if it's going to mandate what you do from it, then you got some issues. You understand what I'm saying? But I'm, I'm impressed. I'm impressed with older people that can still be taught and their minds ain't closed to, 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 to change, you know to good change, to stripping old ways that they might have been in for 50, 60, 70 years. Don't matter. I want y'all. So if it's bad, teach me. And it don't matter who teach me. You know, and that was the beauty of Elder Bill. He didn't care about the messenger. He didn't. I watched Elder Bill talk with these young children around here the same way he talked with us. He really did. He'd sit down with them. And, I mean, he would literally have a conversation with these babies. He would have a conversation with these young children. And they would engage him. And it was like he was soaking up what they were saying to him. And then he dropped knowledge on them. He sure would. He'd give them instruction. He'd he def- he correct them if he had to. I mean, whatever was needed, he would do. So I, I loved it. I loved it. I miss Elder Bill. I, man, I miss Elder Bill. You know, I thank the Father. I mean, we had a real good balance back then with the older, younger. I mean, we will get it. I ain't, I ain't too concerned, but I, I miss him. I do miss my brother. I truly do. And then I love the young people. You know, we got young folk in this ministry. We really do here specifically on this land. You know, we got like Sister Tia and Sister Jada and, you know, all the young boys, you know. Um, but, I mean, young as in teenagers, you know, preteen, looking to be young adults. I'm looking more at that age, you know. We got a brother, Michael. Um, you know, that's, that's another good young brother. I mean, I a 19-year-old brother that said, no, I'm living down here in Hot Atlanta, you know, in Hellville is where he was living. You know what I mean? In Faggotville, USA is where he was living. And he said, "Uh, uh-uh. uh, no, 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 no. I'm coming up out of that. I need to be with my people. I need to be with my people." Let me tell you a quick little story about Bro Michael. Bro Michael, he probably don't want me to tell you. That. I don't care though. He probably want me to tell it though. Bro Michael's the type of brother. He read those scriptures, right? This is last year. He read those scriptures, and the scriptures said how we're supposed to assemble on the first day of the feast. Everybody know about the feast of tabernacles, the high Sabbath. Remember how the scriptures tell us we're supposed to assemble on that day? Come together. Do you know the spirit moved on that boy's heart so strong? Because I told him. We had Elder Bill coming up. And I said, brother, just just hold off. You know, it was like in the middle of the week. I said, just hold off. Elder's coming up at the end of the week. You can ride up with Elder. The spirit moved on that boy's heart so strong to be with his family on that day that he caught a cab from Atlanta to the northern part of Georgia where we were at. How many of y'all going to do that to get to the word? How many of y'all going to do that to get? to be around the saints of the Most High Yah. How many of y'all going to catch a cab hundreds of miles? I got a chat room up. You can respond if you want to. How many of y'all are going to get in a cab and drive two and a half hours, three hours to get to the saints and pay a cab? Because he didn't have a car. He didn't have a car. But you know what? Father done honored that man's uh, heart, and he done put him with the saints. He's part of the community here now. 
That's what the father has done. And he's been a blessing the whole time he's been here. Has he, you know, he needs to learn stuff. Absolutely. Like all of us. Like all of us. But he wasn't. And, he, and the first thing came out of his mouth was, Elder, I'm not trying to disrespect you. I know what you said to me, Elder. I know. I know you told me to wait. But the Bible said we're supposed to be together. I said, brother, let us help you pay for this cab. <laughs> I, what could I say? What could I say? Hallelujah. That's the kind of stuff that moves on my heart when I see young folk, older people, anybody that's just flat out dedicated to do the will of the Father and desire to be around his people. Pastor Dow said all the time, it don't take all that. If the Father has actually moved on your heart, it don't take all that. And I tell folk all the time, get out of this Greek, Roman, American, European mentality. Oh, I just need some time. I'm working on myself. I'm working on No, you're not. Quit lying to yourself. Yes. Is there things that we need time for? Absolutely. But, boy, if you got it in you, the fruit going to show instantly from you because your mind's going to be made up and you're going to walk in there. And the Father is going to give you power to walk in it. It's a time when I hear people saying, oh, I just need some time. I know what that means. Yeah, you need some time to keep in your sin because I ain't seeing no change in you. I ain't seeing no change in you. Now, I can see some that just need that poking and prodding. Some folk just need that kick in the butt all the time. They just need it. Well, good. Elder got a size 15. I ain't got no problem putting my 15 on your whole backside. Hallelujah. I get it done. But there's also somebody out there just flat out making excuses. Flat out. Hallelujah. Glory to King. But we had a we had a great time, saints. We had Elder here. We had the new saints here. Uh, it was a blessing to be able to see my brother Santi Deck and his wife Aaliyah and little Shia was here. Uh, we hadn't got to see them in like a month, and because uh, uh, they live away, they live ways uh, a ways away too. So you know it's a fight to get here, but they battle through it and they come. And that brother, I'm telling you now, that family, boy, they be they 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 be in the spirit. You know, whenever we're in need of good fruit, they find the good fruit, the good wholesome. Uh, not GMO uh, uh, sprayed up fruit, and they bring it, and it's always just just delicious. We have some delicious fruit from that they brought, and from our own garden here, y'all. The garden is doing really, really well. It is. I mean, because we had a lot of people in here yesterday. We had over thirty some people here yesterday. That's a lot of food. It's a lot of food. But we had cantaloupes and stuff from the garden. We had watermelon yesterday, you guys. I mean, man, my mouth watering thinking about it now. And then I got to work. I was hot, man. I was mad. My wife forgot to put the watermelon in my lunch bucket. Y'all don't want to hear about that. Let me keep let me keep going on. <laughs> they don't talk about anything, won't it, y'all? Man, that's be all right. I know I have some fruit in there tonight. She gave me an apple and a banana, but I wanted that watermelon, man. That watermelon was good. So, but yeah, we had the uh, uh, the Deck family up here yesterday, and Elder Frank, and the New Saints, and of course the Chattanooga Saints came down. Uh, Mama Melissa, so Cherie, uh, Brother Dawi came down. I mean, and we just had a good time. Praise on uh, Sabbath night, you know, right after blog talk. I mean, shoot, we was getting it, boy. When Elder them pulled in in the parking lot, shoot, man, that house, that that trailer was rocking. We had that trailer rocking. I know them neighbors like, what is going on over there? Well, you get close enough, you'll figure it out. That spirit will hit you. You either come join or get the hell off the block. I don't care either way. Actually, one of the neighbors, we didn't, they they gone. They leaving now from what we didn't heard. The neighbor across the street, they got a jacked up dog. Y'all seen the video. Y'all remember when Pastor Dial was here working on the land, getting some stuff done here, helped build this thing up here. Remember that little old dog he made a picture of? He kept showing you the video of that little dog chasing after him. Yeah, where that little dog lived. Them people leaving. Hallelujah. And you know what we look at that as? Opportunity for Israelites to move in. Because they were living in a little rental house. It's a trailer, but it's nice. It's on a, um, what do you call it? Yeah, a little rat dog. There you go, Brother Will. You remember? Yeah, that little rat dog. That's from them people across the way. Well, they moving. They moving. Hallelujah. Glory to the king. You know, because they're not the greatest neighbors. In the name of Jesus, they're really not. They're not the greatest neighbors. They, 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 they all tear up everybody's garbage and they don't feed it. I mean, it's just some dumb stuff they be doing. You know what I mean? Just heathens, flat out. I don't know what else to say. They're just some heathens. And, you know, I'm not going to miss them. You know what I mean? This is not the other neighbor that we told you guys about that's been a friend of the ministry. 
I ain't talking about him. He, he's a good guy. He's a good friend in the ministry. He helps out all the time. He even came over and helped with the water pump the other day, you know, when we put that on. But these people, I'm glad they're gone. So that's a rental house across the street. What y'all think Elder going to be doing? Inquiring. It actually got three plots of land that comes with it. So we're going to be inquiring about that property just in case there's somebody that actually listened to the Bible study. I was telling Pastor Dow today, I have listened to Tuesday's Bible study about community ten times. Now, Saints, and I elder, you lying. How you going to listen to it ten times? See, y'all forget I got an hour and a half drive to work every day. I got an hour and a half drive home every day. Hour 15. I don't want to exaggerate. Bro, Tim got an hour and a half. I got an hour 15. Only an hour and 20 minutes. I would have been listening to that teaching ever since. Every day. Most time on the way to work and on the home. The day that it came out, I, I have breaks. My breaks are like 40 minutes long. I was getting 40 minutes in the message in on my breaks. I can't get it out of me, y'all. And I'm on a community. I don't understand this. I'm on a community. The Father has put me in a position where I'm living set apart. You, you see what I'm saying? I got to go in the city, but I come back. Know what Pastor's talking about? These people that segregate themselves, they go in and work, but they come over back and get away from that mess. I'm doing that right now. I'm doing that. But even in the midst of doing that, I still can't get these messages out of my head. And I'm telling you, man, when you couple what Pastor taught us on Scripture stuff, and you couple that, with that torch yesterday? Really? The mindset? See, you want community. You ask about community all the time. You ask about what it takes. I don't say you don't, you lying pig. You lying dog. I hear that wicked spirit. Yes, you do. Because you done called me asking me about the same thing. You know what? That's what you call a form of godliness, but you're going to be denied the power thereof. You want to look like this is what you want. You want community. You want to be on the saints. You want to. No, the hell you don't. You ain't got nobody fooled. Nobody fooled. And I'm a man that's living on the community. I'm a man that's living set apart. And I can't get them words out of my head. Guess what I'm going to be doing here? When I get off with y'all, I got another. I got to go to work again tonight. And guess what I'm going to be listening to on my way to work tonight? Unless the saints call me. I could have saints call me. But if they don't, I'm going to be listening to that message again because there's so much in it. And then you want community, and then he comes here and try to teach you and show you the mentality that's holding you back from truly understanding and grasping and receiving the Hebraic culture of togetherness, of community. That's where we come from. These Gentiles out here, these Jews and these Koreans and all these people that have these neighborhoods, they stole that from us. That ain't how they live. They got that from us, just like they got our perfect laws from us. And they try to contort them and they try to uh, manipulate them to their own apparel. And it ain't going to work because you can't have an imperfect uh, uh, mindset because you're going to be an imperfect person. But you can't have an imperfect mindset and try to take a perfect law and make it work for you. It don't happen like that. You, as an imperfect being, is going to get your mindset set for that perfect law is what you're going to have to do. Or that law going to whoop your tail. That's what it's going to do. You understand what Elder's saying today? Glory to the king. I, you know what, y'all? I, I mean, I be, I be having an idea. You know, I know we're going to talk about the things that's going on in Israel. We're going to talk about the word that's been going forth. We're going to try to get some understanding and stuff like that. But I don't be knowing exactly where the Father's going to lead. I really don't. I really don't. I talked past ten. I talked past four minutes before the, before the broadcast tonight. He was, El, I let you go, man. You got to get ready for that. Yeah, Pastor, I got one more thing. Pastor, let me up, Pastor. I mean, I don't get the opportunity to talk to Pastor either. Y'all don't think I like talking to Pastor Dow? I do. I want to learn. I want to be rebuked. I want to be corrected. Who else going to give me that? Him, Elder Beck. I mean, who else? Elder, who else going to give it to me? So when I get that little window of 10, 15, 20 minutes, I'm going to soak as much of it up as I can get. Now, I love y'all, and I'm prepared, as you can see, because I'm being led of the Spirit. This is stuff that you need to hear. Let's get back to the question, though. How many of y'all this week literally thought about the question that was put on y'all about giving up your personal will to do the will of the Father? How many of y'all even thought about that this week? How many of y'all even prayed and meditated on and asked the Father, what's my position on this, Father? Where am I at in this thing? Have I fully given up my will to do your will? What idols do I have? Around me, what, what what have I made an idol? 
Have I made my mother an idol? Have I made my wife an idol? Have I made my husband or my son or my daughter or my grandchildren or my job or my home or my neighborhood? I ain't fooled. Some of y'all love where y'all live in these cities. Or oh, I don't live in a city. I live in a suburb. Well, he's just, he destroyed Sodom and Gomorrah and the surrounding regions. Don't be fooled. Don't be fooled and act like that ain't going to seep off on you. Oh, I don't live in Atlanta. I live in Covington. Well, you still in Faggotville, USA, under Satan's authority. You ain't fooling nobody. Get the hell up out them cities, and that means them suburbs too, Saint. You ain't living in a country just because you're living in the suburbs. You get, go the straight way. That's country living. Come here, even though our address is actually in a quote-unquote city. We got like 400 some people here. That ain't no city, y'all. It, it is country. We ain't way, way, way out. But it's showing city living. It's showing when you got goats next door to you and chickens across the street from you, you, you ain't living in the city. You're just not. When, when folk don't put their dogs on leashes, you ain't living in the city. You're just not living in the city. Now, I want to get further out. Don't get me wrong. Don't get me wrong. We got a work to do here, and, I, and I'm more than willing to get the work done. But I desire to be further out. I want wilderness life. I want wilderness experience. I want to get prepared to go into the kingdom. Hallelujah. Glory to the king. I know I'm digressing going a lot of different places, y'all, but I keep the, the, the fellowship was just great. We had an awesome time yesterday with all the different saints coming in. It, it was just beautiful. It was absolutely beautiful. We had a great praise and worship session. Our Q&A just was a beautiful time yesterday. You know, so they got double dose yesterday. They had two elders on them yesterday. Y'all think we held back? Mm-mm. Not a bit. Hey, it's been a trying week here in Georgia now. Don't get me wrong. We, we we all fellowshipping and we all glorifying the Father and we all happy. But boy, Elder was bringing the fire to them saints this week. I was bringing the fire to each and every one of them this week, challenging each and every one of their hearts because we got to get this thing in order. So that when these words that come from the pulpit, that come out of Pastor Dial's mouth, when they really hit your heart and you say it's time for you to make a transition, and the father say, head towards Georgia. When the father say, head towards Tennessee, head towards it, you'll be prepared. Those assemblies will be prepared to receive you. Just like Pastor Dow told the saints there in Tennessee in 2010, you need to get ready. You need to get ready. He gave him a whole year. The father gave him a whole year to prepare for these people that was coming. What he was saying was, yeah, the land, you may want to do some work there too. That's okay. But you need to get your minds, you need to get your hearts and, 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 and that stuff in order for when these people come. Some took heed, some didn't take heed to it, you know, and you seeing the fruit from it. I'm saying the same to the Georgia Saints here. Get your heart ready. Now, we beautify the land. It's looking better than it's, it, I mean, it's been transformed. It's being transformed slowly but surely, project by project. It's looking good. Elder got here, he's like, whoa. Wow. You know, from last time I was here, this is a good job, Elder. Looking good. You're getting there. You're getting there, Elder. I can see some progress. He got real excited, you know, because there's some challenges of the land. He, he, Hey, we're going at it. But at the end of the day, the work still needs to be done, and your mind needs to be prepared to actually do that work. Well, what's the work, Elder? What's the work? Well, the work is what we was doing yesterday for about four hours. It's called deliverance. It's called purging this crap. It's counseling is called setting people's minds free so that it can really be transformed do you understand if you shackled and you bombarded by these spirits and you control and you manipulate it and you're tormented by these spirits it's going to be really hard to transform your mind when they still got control over you you understand what i'm saying so you need to get set free you need to get set free. You need to sit your tail down in that deliverance chair. If you ain't in an assembly and you within three, four, five, six, seven, eight, I don't care, 10, 12 hours from an assembly, but you know they're doing deliverance, you better make a special trip. You better make a special trip. You better make a special trip because you need to get your mind set free. You need to get out of this bondage that these devils got you in. And believe me, ain't nothing that's worth anything going to come to you easy. It's just not. Elder Frank, bless you, my brother. I love you. Not even sure if you're listening tonight. You know, because I know you're tired. You've been driving all weekend. you got work in the morning. Thank you, brother. That brother drove six hours just so a sister could come here and fellowship. And, of course, you know, they want fellowship too. But how many of us got that in us? To drive an hour. You had to drive an hour to pick the sister up and her, and her son. Thank the father was on the way. 
but to pick them up, bring them here so that they can experience Hebraic life. They can experience true fellowship, experience a real Sabbath. How many of us remember when we first came into the Sabbath? You're like, man, how many of y'all sit there on the Sabbath, you know, after sleeping half the day, after eating and praying and reading your Bible? You still had 15 hours to go on the Sabbath. And you're thinking, what am I supposed to do? <laughs> well, that's the good thing about with the new people. You reach out and you help them. You bring them around the assemblies and they will see how to engage and how to participate and how to conduct themselves during a Sabbath. All of us have been through that, man. Even I went through that. I first came in this thing because I didn't know Pastor Dow when I came to the Sabbath. I didn't know them. I knew to keep that Sabbath, though. And I went to some churches, and they was dead as hell. I mean, no spirit whatsoever. Some of these Seventh-day Adventists and some of these churches I went into, I'm like, what the? I, I better off staying my tail at home. Ain't nothing going on there. So I did sometimes. And I tried my best to keep the Sabbath. But most of it was just me sitting around. I mean, I'm reading, I'm reading, I'm meditating, then I'm falling asleep, I'm getting up. What is going on? I need something else to do. I mean, really? You don't know how long 24 hours is until you're thinking about 24 hours. But now the Sabbath comes and it goes so fast and it seems like a breath. It just bloop, like a blink. It's like, really? You look out there and it's like, man, we're 30 minutes away from the Sabbath ending. And it was almost like a little depression come over. Just a small, you know, when he's receiving that spirit. I'm just saying. You know, it's just like a sadness, not depression. A small sadness. Because the Sabbath is a delight. And you got to learn, like the Bible says, how to enter into it. Glory to the King. Bless the most high, y'all. I keep at it. We've been having a great time. We really have. And, and I thank the Father. But I've been challenging the saints here. I've been chastising. I've been whooping their tail. I really have. I've been whooping their tail. And I'm going to tell y'all something. I've been letting the saints here know. So y'all get prepared because a lot of y'all, the Father, not a lot. Let me not say that. i got to be careful with my words. A few of y'all, this word is getting to. And you are mentally making the moves. See, it starts there in that mind. Well, you first say to yourself, you know what? I'm, it's over. I'm done. I'm leaving. I'm getting up out of these stinking cities. I'm doing it, Father. See, once the Father knows that you are convinced in your mind and you made up your mind, then he starts to lay the plan out for you to start making these moves. He starts to move on these hearts of these people and these organizations and these businesses. He just starts laying things out so that in the time frame that you're supposed to, you come out. But you've got to make your mind up first that it's going to happen. You're going to do it. You got to be like Abraham. When he when the father told him to go, he just went. He didn't know where he was going. He just left. Trust in the father. We got to get there. We got to get there. All right? We got to get there. So some, very few, are listening. So when you do come, these assemblies that the father is setting up, they will be prepared to receive you. They will be prepared to receive you, show you the way, test you, prove you, and try you. Don't think you're just going to show up and go, man, I'm here. Here my twelve dollars 15 cents. I made it. Not that the money even matters. But you still going to have to be tried, tested, and proven. You just ain't going to walk on some land and, okay, we're going to do Mm-mm. No. Because you just may be tired of your condition, and we need time to discern you. So most of y'all are going to be making moves to live around these communities. Just like you see these faithful saints, Elder Donnie and Brother Scott, and all these saints that have done stuff like that at, at, at the straight way in Tennessee. They don't live on the land. But just when you, every time you see a video, you see them on the land. It's like you think they live there. But they just content being around the land as on the land. But they have shown themselves faithful. they footprints have shown. I'm coming from California. I'm coming from Louisiana. I'm coming from Gal- wherever. To be with the saints of the Most High Yah. I will take a lesser job. That's what these brothers are saying. I won't work. I'll save up money so that I can come and that when I come, that at least for the first six months of the year, that I can be service to the man of Yah. How many of y'all got that mentality? I ain't even going to go there. That's a whole nut. Man, I, I spend a whole broadcast talking about that kind of mentality. And not many in Israel got that kind of mentality. Or they're going to sit back, sacrifice, hold back from the family so that they can be prepared that when they do go and be around the man of y'all, that they can actually be a blessing to him, that they will be available for service at his whim. How many of us got that mentality? Whew. Mm, glory to the king. We got callers, man. We got callers. I think this 929, I think Brother Junior done got a new phone on us, y'all. I think he had. I think this Brother Junior, I don't know for sure, but I'm going to go to the phone. Go to the phone lines. 929. 
caller 929. Call with the area code 929. You're on the Straightway Truth Ministry broadcast here on Law Talk Radio with Elder Rufus. How can I help you? Yes, sir. You hear me? Yeah, brother Junior. Bless you, brother. Yes, sir. Call from Google. Oh, Google. All right. Google. I knew that was a different number. Yes, sir. Google number. Yes, sir, man. Yes, sir. Yes, yesterday teaching, man. That's a beautiful teaching. That's a beautiful teaching, man. That got me convicted, you know. Got me on fire. I like it. Love it. Beautiful. I don't know. I don't know. Oh, I'm on version. You know what I'm saying? I don't know. Nancy woman. Mm mm. You know what I'm saying? You know what I mean? I don't know. I don't want no um, loose, loose woman. I want a virgin woman, a young one. I'm telling you. I like the Torah potion, man. It's on fire, man. On fire. Got me hyped. Got me excited. Hey, that's right, man. That's right. That's right, man. That's right. That's right. Yes, sir. The portion, I ain't trying. The portion, no joke. Yes, sir. I ain't trying. But I ain't trying to, you know, brag about everything, but, you know. Like, you know, um, but I know I know I've been a home monk before. I know I didn't know that. I've been knowing that. I know they know that. I'm a virgin. I'm telling you. I'm for real. But, you know, the mindset's got to come out. You know what I'm saying? The mindset got to come out of it, though. You know what I'm saying? I'll be in a book. You know what I'm saying? Like, the, like the um, I, Amish, they virgin, but they still they don't find a Bible like that. You know what I'm saying? You know what I'm saying? But, you know, you got to get that Bible in you. will live it out. You got to live it out. Have to live it out. But look at this. I'm going to tell you something. You married the movie that had a four-year-old version? Remember that movie, the four-year-old version? They yeah. see they 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 they, just, they try they criticize people being a four year old virgin. See that they criticize people. Oh, your virgin, they don't laugh at you. <laughs> you know how stress people. <laughs> you see that? That's that is crazy. Like what? What is going on here? That's good. You doing what he's doing about said, but you know, you know what I'm saying. See the society living. You try to try to like bash that. You know, you try to like make fun of it. But this is we are living in wicked times. But facts, facts, and all that could be acceptable. No, 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 no. Come on, man. that's backwards. That's ass backwards. Y'all living in song of most on the Bible ain't not lying. The Bible's not lying. We all living in the end of the days. Thank, thank God for the fact. That thank God for these song mice. You know, in the end of the days, but that means that means you gotta get closer. I gotta get right. You know what I'm saying? You gotta get right with the Father. Because yes, he ain't playing games like Pat, like Pat said yesterday. Um. When he, when, he, when he first died, man, he ain't gonna be behind no more. <laughs> he could be, he could bang your neighbor and say, Hallelujah, go to your king. Bang your neighbor, say, Hallelujah, go to your king. Now, the father, man, this is serious, man. This is serious. This is serious, man. That scared me. This is serious, man. The tall person scared me. Get these ways out. This is serious. No serious, doubt. man. That's what I'm calling. I want someone to come to the cities, man. I want to come out of the city. That city, man, gets you, gets you destroyed. It will destroy you, I'm telling you. Mm. So, there's too much in that city, man. Oh, my God. Compare. I went to straight away. Ah, oh, fresh air, spiritual fresh air. Ah, laying back, man. You know, the mindset, laying back. You, you focus. You got to stay hungry. You know what I'm saying? You got to stay hungry. You got to stay, stay hungry, man. You know what I'm saying? The city, man, hell no. I don't be in that city. I don't be here. You know what I'm saying? But you can't, I can't come out by myself. I ain't making an excuse, but you know what I'm saying. The city, you, you can't do nothing holy. When you be in Gary Israel, you go to community. You go to community, mm-hmm. right? You, yeah. You, you get, you, you, you look at the way you're being exposed, you know what I'm saying? You get these feeling, oh, I got to get that out. I'll, I'll get that out. On a straight way, this past year for Passover week, I'll show what way to get out on me. Every time I go by straight, I get better because I, I check these quick ways out, pond on them, and I get out of them. You know what I'm saying? I walk it out. And then every time, you know, and ain't worth the way. That's what you mean. It's very important. So you're going to be exposed. You know what I'm saying? You're going to be exposed, man. You're going to be exposed. You're going to be exposed. You're going to be exposed, yes, man. You can't hide. Yes, sir. You're gonna, you can't hide. Other people yes, say, I want to live straight. I want to live community. I want to live community. But what they see, they fruit. Show up at time. New brown sweet spot. Jumping the gun, new boomers, you know what I'm saying? New boomers, the stroke is something, you're going to see real them. You don't do this, whatever. You're going to see real mm-hmm. I don't want to do it. And they gone. Bro, <laughs> bro, Junior. Bro, Junior. Yes, sir. I'm going to tell you. Yes, sir. Most, most saints. And I have been to the Passovers. I have been to the Tabernacles. I've been to all the feasts. All right? 
Uh, I've been to God's. I've been able to hang out with the saints. I'm just going to keep it real with y'all. Most of y'all ain't ready for no community living. I'm just going to tell you the flat out, flat footed truth. Y'all ain't ready. You're not ready to give all. You're not ready to take the money you feel like you've earned and bring it and put it in one pot, and then you don't get to dictate how it gets proportioned out. You don't get, mm mm. Then a man telling you what to do, when to do it, and how to do it every single day. You ain't ready for it. You ain't ready to submit to that. Especially strong men like me. Especially strong like Pastor Dow. And then you got flat foot looking in your face. You can't intimidate. See, this world is all about intimidating. You can get on a computer and type and intimidate folk. You can get on the phone, that hella thing, and start scaring folk out. You can Facebook them out. And some folk think they're brave to get in your face and, and try to intimidate you. But none of them work with us. None of them. Absolutely none of them work with us. Because we're more than prepared to deal with every single one of them, from the spiritual to the physical. Every single one of them. The Father that prepared us to deal with that. You see what I'm saying? So I know it. I, it's a few. That's why I've been really watching my speech. Not many. It's a few. It's a few that this word is truly piercing and penetrating their heart. Flat out. Most folk can't, ma- can't imagine they, they, they bank card and turn it over to a man. All the saints that live here in the South. Now, some of my let keep because I don't want to have to keep giving back, forth, back, forth, back, forth. By the time. Now, you keep that, brother. Get the money out, bring it in here. All right? Oh, well, Elder, I can only take it. Cool. Keep that on there and then do this with it. I'm still instructing, though. You see what I'm saying? You need gas money, come see me. You need this, come see me. Who wants it? It, it? Brothers don't want to submit to that. They don't want to submit to that type of authority. They don't want to do it. They don't understand it's for their own good, but they don't want to do it. So we understand we ain't talking to most of y'all. We ain't talking to most of y'all because you're just not going to submit. You ain't going to do it. Obey is still a cuss word in your mind. And as long as you got that mentality, you will never be a part of Israel. Flat out. You'll have that title. You'll go around telling folks, oh, I'm an Hebrew Israelite. You'll wear the T-shirt and you'll put the, the head covers on and, and, and wear the pants. if you're mad. You'll do all that. But when that rubber finally hit that road, somebody's going to get bundled up like tares for the fire. And somebody's going to get gathered up and get ready to be taken into the kingdom. And those that got that community mentality, they're going to be ready for the kingdom. But those that don't, and that's fine. Do what you do. Do what you do. Do what you do. Bless you, brother. Junior, you got anything else for us? Oh, 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 yes, 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 sir. Um, yes, yes. Um, yeah. I'm getting. I want to get ready for the community. That's why I got something for this job thing, right? The job thing, right? I was going to ask you about that, bro. I was going to ask you about that. Um, I'm, I'm the job thing. You know, the um, the test. I did. I yes, took sir. math test, reading test. You know. Language, you know, simple test, you know, bend down, you know, work on wires, sound work on wires, on cars, you know, taking parts, things, parts, flipping shapes, whatever, you know what I'm saying, like that. I did pretty well. I took my time to test. I, I did pretty well. I did pretty well. I mean. I did pretty well on them tests. I took my time. Look at this. I'm reading to you. Get my okay. counselor printed out. It's not need. I'm reading to you. Any longer, okay. you know, the various services. You can hear me? Yes, sir. I can hear you. The various services areas that I will be working with any with my counselor on include vocational evaluation to help me find my employment interests and talents, counseling needs, what will help me at FETCAP and in my work life, training, learn the skills I need for the job I prefer, import import ability, readiness. Being prepared, being prepared to be successful at work, support services, referrals to other agencies, connecting with the other services I need, placement, job maintenance, and job-related support, whatever I need to get and keep the job, faculty-based placement needs, support, and services for help if I work at FedCap or any, I mean, or on of the outside contracts and and basically you know I answer question on my um counselor asked the question you know my fan merch you know whatever I answer yes and then she printed out for me this print out you know what I'm saying and my main my main thing I want to go for a job the main thing I'm looking for is my first my first thing I'm looking for is um my main my main goal is uh you know construction and my second thing is um masonry work with concrete you know lay block you know what I'm saying I want to do that 
I want, I want, I want to produce. You know what I'm saying? I want, I want to be prepared to produce. I can't prepare for a community. Because a community, you must produce. You must produce. You can't mm-hmm. sit back, dude. I want, I want to get ready. I want, I want to get prepared. You know what I'm saying? I like, I had a will to work, to, to work in construction. You know, you know what I'm saying? I like, I like to learn that. I put my heart to do that. You know what I'm saying? I want to do that. Because you got to be produced. You got to be productive. You know what I'm saying? I love to do that. Yeah. Learn how to do that. I'm do too. And I'm um, looking at this tomorrow, right? Now they're going to test me on, you know, custodial evaluation. Not doing so, you know, they're going to you see I can sweep the floor, you know, mop the um, mop, white windows, you know what I'm saying, move around now. I'll be doing it for six days. For the whole five days a week, and then the Monday, next Monday, I'm, and then the 11th. I'm starting tomorrow and then the 11th. The hours are from 11 a.m. to 5 p.m. Monday through Friday. I got a punch in by 11, I mean, by 10.45 a.m. Now, this is tough for now. I like it. I like, I like being challenged. It challenges you, too. You know what I'm saying? These constructions yeah. and um, lane blocks. Yeah. It's a challenge. I like, I like being challenged. I like being challenged. I want to be challenged. That's good news, be challenged. I, love, I love the challenge. Yes, sir. Hallelujah. I, like, I love being That's good news, brother. Yes, sir. That's very yes, good sir. news, brother. Jones. Very good news. And, you know, that's yeah. funny. You look at that. And um, and uh, all right, we got some other callers, so brother, I'm gonna talk about this, and then I'm gonna let you go, oh, brother Junior, and uh, bless oh, you, though, brother. But yeah, you pray, look at this. Pray for me, pray for me, pray for me. Oh, definitely, me. no doubt, brother. We're gonna keep you lifted. Hey, but look at this, brother Junior. Look at this. That the way they them heathen set this thing up. You know, they provide the means to make it set up for you. They train you. Then uh, they provide the opportunity for you, find a job and all that. And then once you get the job, they 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 help you sustain it so that they properly train you and keep you so you can keep the job. That's the stuff we're supposed to be doing, man. You know what I'm saying? So we're supposed to be doing in Israel. That's the stuff Pastor Dow was talking about in the last Tuesday Bible study. Put the wise man over the trucking company. Do this, do this for two years. You know, it was a whole breakdown just like that. That's the mentality we're supposed to be having towards each other. So I'm grateful, brother. I'm grateful that this system, it, it, this wicked system, is still going to put you in a position. Like he said, we can send our young boys to day school. Get their CDL lights, come back and work for the kingdom. That's exactly what you're doing, bro, Junior. Going out here, getting these skills in masonry, doing brick, getting these construction skills, and then you're going to come into the kingdom and take over Pastor Down, Elder Beck, and all the people that's been doing all the building. I said we need these young men to learn these skills. They're going to be able to get it, retain it, and, and be able to do it for some years. you preparing yourself to be one of them. That's a blessing, brother. That's a brother that's listening to what's going for and going out and making it happen. And you know what I'm saying? I bless the most high. Bless you, brother Junior. I got these other calls. I got three or four other calls to get to, man. Bless you, my brother. Shalom, shalom, shalom. Bless you, shalom. Shalom. That's our brother Junior from New York. Hallelujah. Glory to the king. All right. We got another caller here. That's a good call, brother Junior. Hallelujah. Keep brother Junior lifted. He asked for prayer, so y'all pray for him. Praise that the Father sustain him. You know, the brother doing what he needs to do to try to get up out that wicked city, y'all. He's doing it. And he's trying to be prepared. And when he come out, he got a skill that can be used in Israel. Sure, we need more brick layers. We do. We need more masonry. We do. We need that stuff, man. We got we got communities to build. Hallelujah. Glory to the king. All right. Uh caller number eight one six. Area code eight one six. You're on the straightway truth ministry broadcast with Elder Rufus. How can I help you? Shalom, shalom, Elder Rufus. This is brother Corey. My brother. Bless oh. you, my brother. <laughs> bless you, bless you, brother. Bless you, brother. I'm telling you, I'm sitting there eating it up. We um definitely had a bless, bless. Powerful, powerful Shabbat, brother. And uh, I'm just sitting here. You know, I had a chance to get home today from work. I said I want to tune in to the Saints, tune in to Elder. You know, I always go back and uh, get a chance to listen to it. me and the wife sit up, you know, at night and just eat up. You know, that, you know, um, it's just been a blessing to us, Elder, just eating off of that, you know, whenever, you know, we get a chance to sit down together and, and, and touch bases with you know, what the Father's putting on your heart. Because I tell you, you know, I was telling some other saints, I said, if you really understand what the Father is doing in Israel, you understand that the Father is feeding us just with the best. He, we, I mean, we eating high, you know, on the fruit of the Word and the fruit of what the Father is doing in our lives because he's constantly doing some things. And uh, I wanted to call in today, Elder, and tell you, bless you, and, we, you know, we love you. We love, you know, just being able to receive from the word that comes forth from what the Father put within you. And I uh, really just share a few more testimonies, Elder. 
Oh, you, know? you know we up for that, brother. You know we want to hear them. <laughs> I, saw, I saw some of them posts. I know y'all was getting at it with some deliveries yesterday, brother. <laughs> Woo! I mean, boy, it's like Satan was getting smacked up against the wall last night, man. I'm drained today, brother. <laughs> Get him. Get him, brother. Get him. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Well, I tell you what, though, you know, we, you know, I was, I was talking to the Saints yesterday about how the father always work a mighty sign and wonder, you know, in Israel when he's getting ready to do something powerful and great with his people. And I say, even the words say, you know, the Yahudim seeketh for a sign. But the Gentile seeking for knowledge, you know, and so I said, see, these things is what is going to keep people missing, because in you know First Corinthians chapter four, I believe that's uh, verse seventeen. It says, "For the kingdom of God is not by word, but by power." And so I'm pointing these key things out to the saints, elder. I said, let's just take Moses over in Exodus when him and you know Aaron went in to speak with Pharaoh. And I said, it was a mighty sign and wonder work by the Father, as well as Satan did many signs and wonders. It's like he's going to do in this end time. He's going to work many signs and wonders, and people are going to be fooled by it. I say they dropped their staffs, and it was turned into serpents. Moses dropped that one staff that the Father told him that it was going to be, you know, have power in it. Mm-hmm. He also told the Yahudim, he told the Israelites that was there that the Father was getting ready to set them free. And these were the things that was going to come forth, and they didn't believe. Nope. And so when he dropped his staff, it ate up the serpents and ate up all of the magic and all the sorcery that the magicians and the sor- and the sorcerers did. And I said, now look in this, I said, because this was powerful, because I'm getting to something. Hell, I said, see, you take somebody like me from St. Louis Avenue, Marcus, you know, a little hard-headed little dude running around St. Louis, but I believe, like the words say, this is the stuff that the Messiah was talking to the disciples about. And they say in Mark, you know, 16, that these, to them that believe, these signs shall follow. They are going to follow you. And I said, you so you take somebody like me who didn't know nothing about this, and I still don't know nothing. All I know is that Christ was crucified, brother. Hallelujah. But I'm seeing out here at Shofar Mountain on the side of the mountain, we, we get out here and the Father just drop a heavy dose of his spirit and anointing down. I mm. speak in tongues like never before, and then here it is, Sister Sandra interpreting then we got oh, casting out devils going on. I mean, they, I mean, devils getting slain everywhere. Then we take, you know, there there was a lady elder that came to our house about two months ago. This was before you and Pastor came, and I had forgot all about this lady. She came and said her son was suffering from epilepsy real bad all during the school year. He was. You know, we have real bad episodes flopping around the classroom on the floor. You know, all sorts of stuff, you know, that he, you know, she was afraid, you know, didn't know what was going to happen to him. They, they, the, the epilepsy was getting bad. And she talked to one of the sisters at work, and she said, well, I, wanna, I want you to call Brother Corey, and I want you to go over to his house because I know he can be healed from that. And mm. so she called me, brother, and... She called me around 5 p.m., said she was on the way. Man, she didn't get there until almost like 9.30. I'm like, what happened? Well, I was just, you know, she was kind of scared to come over. Mm. So I just told her, I said, look, sister, I said, we're not here for no games. You know, I don't know what they're doing in the churches. Actually, I do know what they're doing, but I know just in the name and in the blood and in the people, this healing is for his people. This is the bread. Yeah. And yeah. you got to understand when you come into this, you can't bring fear and doubt and all these things to it. Nope. But I'm, a, you know, I can tell you right now, we're gonna do we're gonna do some separation from demons in here. We're gonna get we're gonna do some, you know, some freedom in here. We're gonna get you set free first. Some of them generational Hallelujah. things. 
We're going to set your son free. We're going to do some repenting in here, and then we're going to cast from among us this thing right here that, that so-called, so you know, supposed to be an uh, illness on your son. Yeah. And uh, I tell you, man, we prayed for her, and, did, man, it, it was a beautiful time. But I forgot all about her. She called me this past sixth day. I was in the gym with some clients. She called me. And I didn't know who it was. She was like, he healed. He, I'm like, who, huh? <laughs> <laughs> Hallelujah. She said, he, yeah, elder, she said, he healed. And I'm like, well, who healed? She was like, she was trying to tell I couldn't remember her son. I ain't remember him. And then when she told me, I sat on your couch. You the first person I called. I'm sitting here in the doctor's office. They got DVDs. They trying to look at why his brain pattern is different right now when it had all the, the you know, this, Spacey stuff and before now it's all cleared up, and he oh, haven't man. had another episode. I mean, bro, you know, come on, Elder, I'm sitting Hallelujah. here looking, and I'm saying to myself, mm. this is why we don't get shook out. Those who believe, you don't go follow another teaching. You don't go to you know Egyptology. You you don't follow nothing else because the Father is showing us His signs and wonders. Right now, and so when he, when the Messiah come on the scene, we're going to be able to recognize the same power that's over in the kingdom. Mm. We're going to recognize because we dwell in that power right now. The Messiah said these things that he do, we shall also do an even greater thing. Greater. Yeah, even greater. Hold on a second, brother Corey. Hold on. Hallelujah. 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 Man, glory to the King. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Yes, Hallelujah. sir. Yes, sir. I'm Hallelujah. telling you. Yeah. It's, you know, Ed, we just, we just, you know, we, we right there with you. You know, uh, Brother Snow just moved. He sold everything and just moved up this way, you know, with the <laughs> saints. <laughs> Hallelujah. <laughs> oh, we know that. That don't shock me hearing that about Brother Snow. Hallelujah. That's a no good other no other been faithful. Yeah. I'm telling you, right. yeah, Elder. Young yes, brother. Sir. That's young strong brother. Yes, sir. Hallelujah. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. And we Greet this is where we going, Elder. Yeah, greet them saints for me, brother. Greet them saints. I so will. Love them. And, and we're going to see them soon, brother. Hallelujah. Keep up yes, the good sir. work. Yes, sir. Brother. Keep up the good work. Keep trusting the Father. Keep Keep hitting them saints. Keep hitting them because they yes, need sir. it. They're going to receive it. Yes, All sir. is mm. glory. Bless yeah. you, my brother. Yeah. Well, Elder, I'm going to say this last bit, man. You, you know, Elder, we, we, you know, the Father been putting it on my heart just to, you know, really clean out the house. You know, we were talking about aching. We don't want no type of calamity in the house Mm-mm. that's going to hold us back because we're getting ready to try to make a move here. And the father is pointing. I told him. I said we got about thirty-one saints, but it's about twelve on my heart that the father has already made well in my heart. And brother Snow is one of them. So Hallelujah. with Hallelujah. that, with that being said, I you know I said we're gonna have to go through. You're gonna have to come clean. Yeah. Because otherwise you can't. You can't. You ain't gonna get on the boat. No. And this is for right now. Wait till the Messiah come. We, you know, all us, you know, me, me everybody, we trying to get clean so we can be yeah. just like the saints there. We, we can just get in one one spot right now, you know, and then after that, get ready where the Father sent us. We, we going faithfully. Yep. No question yep. asked. I mean, brother, we do monthly type purges and stuff. where Because, you know, you got different uh, folk coming in, different gifts and stuff, folks sending this that you just never know. So we just want to make sure ain't no idols coming in this house, ain't no nothing. You know what I'm saying? And I go through mm-hmm. anointing the place, all the doorways, all the entry points. I, brother, you just got to stay on it because the devil wants to mm-hmm. slip stuff in. You know what I mean? Yes, he sir. wants to slip it yes, in. Sir. Something simple that you think is nothing. Oh, it's, it's grandma sent them this. Yeah, she wicked, though. Let me see what the hell she said. <laughs> I want to inspect that crap. You know, and if it's of something good, then you can keep it. If not, we get we putting it out there in that in that pit. We got a pit out back. We're gonna burn that crap. Ooh, you know, hallelujah. We messing with it, brother. So, man, bless you, brother Corey. We got a few more calls on him. We'll head to them. We love y'all, man. Keep yes, up the good work, brother. Keep keep the encouraging testimonies coming, man. We love hearing them. Hallelujah. Tell them thanks. Yes, we love them. Bless. Them. Bless. Them. Yes, sir. Bless you, Ella. Bless, bless you, Ella. 
Our brother Cora from KC, y'all. Woo! Woo! They out there getting it done. Hey, we got a call from Pastor Dow area. I'm going to pick this call up. 615, 615. You're on the Straightway Truth Ministry broadcast with Elder Rufus. How can I help you? Hey, shalom, 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 Elder. Pastor Dow Pastor here. Pastor Dow. Bless you, brother. Bless you. I tell you, it's encouraging to hear what Brother Corey just got finished saying, isn't it? Yes. <laughs> I'm going to make a statement here. As a matter of fact, I'm going to quote a portion of the scripture, and hopefully it will resonate with, in the minds of the people. Before honor, humility. Mm. Most people don't get that. Most people don't understand how you became an elder, how Elder Doug became an elder, how I became a pastor, how Pastor Fox became a pastor, and how Elder Austin became an elder, Elder Frank, and and and, and um, all the rest of it. They just don't understand that we had to demonstrate the spirit of Yah, and we had to have humility. And you had to have another man of Yah in front of you who had tenure to recognize the gift of Yah that is already working in you. Mm. So before honor, humility. And and what we're missing in this generation more than anything is humility. Now, you look at this. Because Brother Corey will not let anybody in to infiltrate the ministry in any kind of way. He continues to stay the course. Every time you turn around coming out of Kansas City, Missouri, I told you that man got it. Yeah, every time I turn yeah. every time you turn around, the most high y'all doing the same thing with him that he do you know, that he did with Elder Austin. Same thing he did with me when I was a young man at that age yep. and stuff. Didn't even know what in the world was going on because I didn't have nobody to teach me and to and to guide me. And to tell me what was happening to me, I just walked by faith. And as I began to go on in this journey, I began to understand even more so what's happening. And I just mm-hmm. thank y'all that he's put me in a position to be able to teach the other Israelites. But I tell you, what's happening with these men is, is showing that they have a personal relationship with the Father. And not only yeah. that, but it's showing that they're in unity and they are connected with the real true Israelites. That's where we at today. Mm. And we're going to continue to keep hearing more stuff coming out of Kansas City, Missouri, because uh, Brother Corey got it. He got it. Mm. Hallelujah. He got it, and it's just the truth. And uh, the reason why I called in, because I wanted to call in, and I wanted to say this. You know, when we, um, you know, I'm 20 years, a little over 20 years in uh, practice, and not only that, but knowledge and experience. In community, I'm 16 years on this community. I don't know if it's 16 or 17. My wife knows dates better than I do. But I'm 16 years. We'll go with 16 years on this community. It's just a literal practical practical experience. And experience tells me, and it teaches me, and I'm going to give this word out to everybody else that's out there listening. Even down there, we'll start with we're down there where you are, straight way down there in Georgia. You have 30-something people that are, you know, I don't know, maybe 20, 30 people that faithfully attend on Shabbat services and stuff. But from experience, you're going to lose 75% of them people within five years that is sitting mm. there on that land with you right now. Mm. You're going to lose 75% of them. 75% of them, even though they're there, they're just not serious about the most high. Now, the mm. thing is, is that you and your wife already know who's serious. You already know. Y'all has already put in your heart who it is. And, and not only that, even out of Shofar Mountain, Pastor Fox, whoever's out there with you right now, you give it five years, 75% of them will be gone. And it's simply because, and I wish the, the attrition rate wasn't that way, is because they have not fully resolved to actually set their heart towards the kingdom. It's amazing how the king... Though he was rich, he could, he became poor. How he could leave glory and come down here to this earth, divest himself of all earthly uh, wi- uh, riches, all earthly, everything that the earth had to offer to him, anything was offered to him, he rejected. And then when we get where we are 2,000 years later, all of a sudden we don't have to give up nothing. We don't have to sacrifice nothing. We don't have to give up our will. We don't have to make sure that everything we do is about the us and the our. Uh, and the we, but it's all about me, myself, and I in some form, 
some shape and some way. Now, I'm saying this not because I wish that 75% of the people fall away. No, as a matter of fact, I, I don't think that people make moves because they want to fall away. I don't believe that. But because we refuse to look in our hearts and discern Yah's body, we have a ha- heavy, high, lofty opinion of ourselves, and we don't discern Yah's body. And then at the most inopportune time, the things that we refuse to deal with, the things that we refuse to look inward in, and to allow deliverance to take place, it is that thing that's going to end up taking us away. And I, if I've seen it once, I've seen it a thousand times, and I'll give you a little bit of statistics here. Mm-hmm. We've been out here 16 years. I guarantee you 200 people has lived on this land, and we're sitting just, just a little under 30, maybe 30, Right now, after 16 years, that actually live on this land. So what does that tell you? And it's not because um, there was contention, sin, iniquity, and transgression. Everybody got to fight the fight of faith and lay a hold of eternal life. We're going to be dealing with sin, hell, and the devil. It's because that most people didn't count the cost. It was too much and too high of a price for many people to pay. No, everybody's not going to be on the community. I realize that. Nobody, everybody's not built for it, and everybody can't do it. It's just simply, it's that they, it ain't that they can't, it's that they want. They just will not do it, period. They will not lay down their will to let the Father's will be accomplished. Now, the people I have here on this community right now, I got some of the most, the, the most beautiful set of Israelites that's sitting on this community right now that we've had in the history of straightway. And you can't get not a one of these people to budge one inch as far as moving from this place. They would, they would rather die than leave this place. It's a mm-hmm. place of refuge, a place of safety. They know that the place of Yah is that they know that he's living here. Um, like I said, on Shabbat, I hear uh, Brother Corey's uh, testimony about the power and the healing of Yah, which backs up and confirms the word that is already in his heart. Uh, just a man of Yah. Yeah. Same thing. Like I said, I've got testimonies of healings um, that I would love to tell everybody. But some of these things, you remember the Bible talks about that there are things out there that when we have done in our past that they're so ashamed, we're so ashamed for them that we don't even, we dare not even speak of them. But we yeah. thank the Father yeah. being mindful of us, healing us, and restoring us, writing our names down in the Lamb's Book of Life and letting us know because healing is the children's bread that we are yes. a child of the king. And the power of the Most High Yah, Yahshua HaMashiach, is working in this ministry and is working mighty. And I want everybody to get ready. There's going to be even greater works than these that are coming forth, especially if Pastor Dow has anything to do with it. Y'all just get yourself saddled up, get yourself ready for a ride of your life because there's going to be more Israelite serious-minded people, not these foolish people that we just got finished purging, or let me just say it the right way, that the Most High Yah just got finished purging all these hypocrites from the midst of us. He's purging so he can make room for those who are serious mind, serious spirit, serious hearts, and he's got a place prepared for them. He already know who you are. And some of you, you're already in our hearts. We already know who you are. But the Most High Yah is going to have his people. And I, I'm sure that there are definitely not 12,000 faithful Israelites in the United States of America. So we have got to be part of the remnant. But we're going to get it done. Uh, we're going to continue to keep pressing toward the mark of the prize of the high calling. We're going to keep our hand to the plow. And we're going to, hey, with or without you, we're going to prophesy to the wind, whether they hear or forbear, the will of the king will be accomplished, whether it be with or without them. And that is just the truth, and that's the truth straight way. Elder, have a good night. Shalom. Bless you, Pastor. Hallelujah. That was Pastor Dow, y'all. Woo! You don't need me to. Uh, you don't need me to get in there and, and try to make sense of that. That was plain to the point. Greater signs are coming. Man, seventy-five percent. That's the statistics, boy. That's the statistics. Mm, mm, mm. That's in your face preaching right there, y'all. That's in your free, in your face teaching. It's raw and it's real. What you gonna do about it? I mean, flat out, what you gonna do about it? Are you gonna be in the number? Are you gonna make up your mind to relinquish your will for the will of Yah? That's simple. That's a real simple question. Very hard answer though. Very hard 
applicable answer to that. Very hard to apply that answer. Will you totally give up your will? See, first and foremost, you got to get out your own mind. You ain't law. What you think ain't the law. It ain't true. Humility comes before honor. Hallelujah. Glory to King. Bless you, Pastor. We appreciate it. Hallelujah. These phone lines done lit up. That dollar called in. It lit up the phone line. Hallelujah. Let's go to 718. 718. I'm trying to run through these calls for y'all, saints. 718. 718. 718. You're on the Straightway Truth Ministry broadcast here with Elder Rufus. 718 Eric Cole. How can I help you? Shalom, Elder Rufus. is Brother Rashid. Brother Rashid. Bless you, brother. Bless you, Elder. How you doing? I'm incredible, man. And fi- fired up, can you tell? Yes, sir. Hallelujah. I had, we, um, a few days, I think it was like last week, because I want to I want to talk to you about, I want to ask you a few questions about the, about the Holy Spirit. Okay. Um, the, this past week, the Father's been like putting it on my heart to, I get to labor with my brothers, my two brothers who are in this area, who are in the Columbus area to receive the Holy Spirit. And I've been praying for them. And a few days ago, the Ruah spoke to me and said, "When your brother gets when your brother gets home, carry for the Holy Spirit." And my bro- both of my brothers they, they didn't receive they never received deliverance yet. But they, they they've been straight with before, but they haven't received deliverance yet. But they're going mm-hmm. to. And yeah. I had a few questions. Is is there an order to receiving the Holy Spirit? No. Um, I had no deliverance before receiving the Holy Spirit. Pastor Dow had no deliverance before receiving the Holy Spirit. Um, it's all about your belief, you know. Okay. So no. All right, yes, sir. Yes, sir. Because I um I was speaking to them before we tarried, before we tarried for it, and I told them because I was watching pastors teaching they did back in 2012 about the baptism of the Holy Spirit. Um, I was watching that one like over and over and over and over and over again, and. Mm-hmm. Said that he said that this, this isn't man's doing. This isn't like any other anybody else is doing. But the father's doing. The father is manu- manually choosing himself who he wants to pick. And mm-hmm. um, now I'll tell you this, brother. Yeah. Rashid, I'll tell you this, yes, brother. Rashid, yes, a repentant heart would really help. It would really help. You need to go before the father earnestly, and humble, and meek, with a repentant heart for what you have done. You know what I'm saying? Because why yes, would he sir. want to use you with his gift if you just want to make make mock of it, make light of it? You know what I'm saying? That don't even make no sense. You know? So a repentant yes, heart would definitely go a long way. So if there's some things there that need to be repented of, just, just lead them in a repentance prayer. And then Terry, brother, just, just lift your hands and start giving the Father the highest praise. Say it faster and faster and faster. And then just, just know, though, that you're going to receive. I've been around brethren that uh, that have received the Holy Spirit, and of course I don't see them myself. But you know, I could look at them literally and tell, oh, this brother ain't gonna leave until he get the Holy Spirit, and the Holy Spirit fell on them quickly. You know what I mean? It's an expectancy you gotta have in your heart. You gotta believe and know today's my day. I'm getting it today. You know what I'm saying? Yes, and, sir. And you got that expectancy? They'll get it. They'll get it, brother. Keep keep going after it. They'll get it. Okay, yes, sir. Because I um, I spoke to him. And I was like, I was telling him that uh, I've been pressing him pretty much when he was at work. I've been calling him and like, when you get home, because because when I pray when I pray for the Holy, when I prayed for him, he said, uh, "This isn't anything that I did. I didn't call him. I didn't plan this out or anything." But the Ruah spoke to me one morning and was like, and the Ruah spoke to me one like was like, when he gets home, pray for the Holy Spirit. And I called him. I was like. When you get home, you know, we're going to carry for the Holy Spirit. And he said, brother, I got the same thing. So I was like, oh, so this is like, I guess, the, the green light for the Father. It's, you know, we got the green light to go. So um, I, I guess I'll just do it do it again, I guess. Yeah. Keep caring for it, bro. It'll come. Bless you, bro. All right. Bless All right bless love you, brother. You. Yep. Love Keep you the too. faith. Hallelujah. Glory too. to the King. Our beloved brother, Rashid. We know we filled with the Holy Spirit. Hallelujah. I heard his testimony. Let's go to my brother Vernon. I believe this is brother Vernon. Uh, area code 248. Area code 248. Area code 248. You straightway truth ministry broadcast here on Blog Talk Radio with Elder Rufus. How can I help you? 
Shabbat Shalom, Elder. Shabbat Shalom, Saints scattered abroad, Pastor Dow, Shofar Mountain, and all my beloved brothers and sisters. Hallelujah. All right, Elder, shut the show down. Pastor done closed up shop. How can you follow that? Hey, <laughs> you know what I mean? Bro, you can't. You really can't follow it, bro. And I don't need to. It's so clear cut, that's man. Right. It's so clear cut. And, and you know what? So much love, wonder Brother Vernon. Could you feel the love yes, in his voice? The compassion yes, for the sir. people? Yes, mm. sir. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. All I want to say, Elder, is uh, like I say, when Pastor came on, I, I just like, whoa. But uh, I'm lost, speechless, lost for words right now. But, Elder, I'm working to get down there to the thing. As we speak, heart made up, mind made up, Father is pushing me in that direction. I and mean, I tell you, I just can't wait to get down there so I can get myself solid with the Father, get myself righteous. Pick up the, all those things that the devil has stolen from me and claim them all back. Claim them all back. Mm. And I tell you, it's just a beautiful thing the Father's working on my heart and uh Man, I'm trying not to get emotional right now. I tell you, because listen, the pastor just get, just got me on hype. He got me hyped up right now. But hallelujah, elder! I just really wanted to call in, and, and like I told you, I was gonna call in to hear your voice and say shalom, love you, man. I miss you. Can't wait to see you again. Hallelujah, shalom, brother. Shalom, love you. Miss you too. And I'm looking forward to when the follow hours to come together again. Hallelujah. Keep yes, at sir. it, brother. Bless and, uh, you, brother. Oh, go ahead. Bless you, but let me let me say this before I go. Uh, Brother Rashid, we're going to get at it. I, I, I've been asking for a little bit because I'm going through, through some things, but I'm coming down there and we're going to get at it. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Bless you, others. Thanks a lot. I appreciate you uh, accepting my call. No problem, brother. Bless you. Shalom. Love you. Shalom. Love you. Shalom. Hallelujah. That brother Vernon from Michigan. Hallelujah. Good brother. Good, good brother. Caller nine. Uh oh. See what I did here. Okay. Caller nine one two. Caller nine one two. Area code nine one two. You're on the straight truth ministry broadcast with Elder Rufus. How can I help you? Shalom, Elder. Shalom. This is Elder Frank. Elder Frank, bless you. <laughs> Bless you, Elder. Um, I, I am listening tonight, um, and I just wanted to to call. And the original attempt was to call was to tell you that uh, thank you again for having us. It's always a blessing and a, an encouragement and a strengthening experience when I come to see my family there in Georgia. I, as mm. I as I say probably too often, I love each and every last one of you. I mm. love to see your faces, and I love to I love to hug your necks. I, I just love you all. Um, but since I had gotten the caller queue, obviously Brother Corey uh, called in and uh, our pastor, Pastor Dow. And uh, I'd just kind of like to, well, first of all, give, give, give honor and praise to the Most High that he is using um, that man, Brother Corey, a uh, sound man, a sound brother, um, to, to rot his work in this generation and in this country. Um, I give him glory and I give him honor and I give him praise and keep up be encouraged brother Corey and keep doing what you're doing uh everyone I believe I'm, I'm going to speak for the elders and pastor um and myself is that the, from the, the minute I laid eyes on you there was that knowing in the spirit of who you were so keep it up brother it's encouraging to my heart and I know it's an encouragement to those that are around you and to Israel I'd also like to um, uh, speak maybe presumptuously about what Pastor said. One of the things that Pastor said is before honor, humility. And, you know, it's easy. It's easy for men to to say things. It's easy for people to speak. Anybody that's got a mouth can say anything. But until you have been humbled by the Most High, I mean truly humbled, you don't really understand what that what he means when he says that, when Pastor says that. And he all another thing Pastor always says is those with the experience are at the mercy 
or, or the, those with the argument are at the mercy with those that, with the experience. And when Pastor Dell speaks from his experience, and Elder Rufus speaks from his experience, and Brother Corey speaks from his experience, and, and Brother Mitchell, those are the people that we need to hearken to and listen to and hear what they are saying. Listen to them and hear what they have to say because they are, they are watching for your souls. And one of the other things that Pastor said that really speaks to me is that most people don't count the cost and they have a high lofty opinion of themselves. And I know coming up in this generation, in, in my personal circumstance and everything I've experienced in my life, we all have a high lofty opinion of ourselves, yet we fail to remember that we should not think ourselves above that which is written. And I'll turn our attention to Isaiah 1, when the Father says, The sole of the foot, even unto the head, there is no soundness in it, but wounds and bruises and putrefying sores that have neither been closed, neither bound up, neither mollified with ointment. We are all coming out of a mind and a system does not want their slaves to run away from them. They are going to continually pursue us. And it is about a made-up mind. It is a change of the mind, a renewing of the mind, that is going to get you to be one of those 25%. If you have not made up your mind, and you have not, and I have not, fully committed myself to do what he has asked me to do, whether I like it or not, I'm going to be part of that 75%. You're going to be part of that 75%. And I just thank, as, al as I always do, I thank Pastor for his sound words. I thank the, the Father that he has put that man before me, before the elders, before the brothers and sisters as an example that we can see and touch and speak to and learn from, from what he says and what he doesn't say, what he does and what he doesn't do. And to know that he's had that much mercy on me when I have been fooled, filled with, and I am filled with bruises, putrefying sores that have neither been sewed up or closed or mollified with ointment. I bless his holy name. I love you, Elder. I love that dear wife of yours, the sisters and brothers there in Georgia and in Tennessee and throughout this land. Bless you. Bless you, Elder Frank. Thank you for them sound words. Thank you for them words of encouragement. Um, thank you for coming home. You know, uh, every time you come home, Elder, it's a blessing. And, uh, you know, we just enjoy sweet fellowship with you all the time. I love hugging your neck. Uh, I love kissing your neck. I just love being in your presence, brother. I do. So thank you. Thank you, brother. Hallelujah. Y'all been blessed. Man, woo! I ain't even looked at this chat room. I don't even want to go over there and look. Man, man, man. Y'all done got Pastor Dow, Brother Corey, Elder, Be I mean, Elder Frank. Woo! Mm. Man, y'all blessed tonight. We are blessed, y'all. We are blessed. Last caller. Last caller. Caller number 951. I believe this is my brother Chris from California. 951. Caller number 951. You're on the Straightway Truth Ministry broadcast here on Blog Talk Radio with Elder Rufus. How can I help you? Shalom, my elder. Shalom. Shalom, brother Chris. Bless you. Whew. Coming after... Uh you know, you talking and, and Pastor talking, Elder Frank and Brother Corey, it, it just brought me back to something I was uh, studying uh, earlier this week, and it's in Ecclesiasticus in Apocrypha, chapter 6, verse 34. And it says, uh, Stand in the multitude of the elders and cleave unto him that is wise. Also in chapter 8, verse 9 in Ecclesiasticus, it says, Miss not the discourse of the elders, for they also learned of their fathers, and of them thou shalt learn understanding, and to give answer as need requireth. 
Mm. Oh, so I thank you. I mean, I mean, after listening to that, I just wanted to hang up the phone. And, but, you know, I'll call back next week. That, that's good. I'm good. I'm topped off. <laughs> I'm ready to go. <laughs> <laughs> but it also brings me older to um, uh, the, the pastors talking about community and coming out of these cities. You know, uh, last uh, yesterday during the Shabbat, uh, we had internet problems all day, and we couldn't catch the service. We actually had internet problems all week. So I was going back to some of Pastor's old teachings from, you know, the 2011 period, and back at the time where if you wanted to hear from him, you know, this is before online church, and <laughs> you had to actually catch him on YouTube or write him a letter, and he'd send you his teachings. So I was listening to some of his teachings, and even back then he's talking about get out of the city, get out of the city, mm-hmm. get out of the city. And that's been on my heart for a very long time of getting out of the city. Um, I, I came across Ecclesiastes chapter 7, verse 16. It says, Number not thyself among the multitude of sinners, but remember that wrath will not tarry long. And, uh, Elder, it it does hurt. It, it hurts. You know, regardless of whether we see it or not, we're numbered amongst the sinners. We're living amongst them. We We get to hear them. We get to hear their drama. We, you know, they're right next door to us. They're right down the street from us. And every Shabbat, you know, uh, and, and listening to the, the service, and that's my opportunity to fellowship with the saints. Um, but also the Most High has working on my heart greatly. Um, my beloved brother, I don't know if he wants his name mentioned, but I'm going to say it anyways. Ever since Brother Scott left, who and, and, and we were all in fellowship down here, it's been hard because... I mean, here in California, in Southern California, there ain't nobody trying to follow the Most High. You know, there's so much pride, ego, jealousy, envy, people trying to catch up with the Joneses, Johnsons, and the Smiths. I mean, there's just so much going on. And studying the Word, listening to the pastor and you and the elders, and praying in, in, in deep prayer, you know, I'm getting out, Elder. I don't know about everybody else. But I know for me and my family, we're getting out. And we're not community ready. I know that. I know myself. You know, I, I'm not that person in James that looks in the, the James talks about when you look in the mirror, you forget the manner of man you are when you leave the mirror. I know that I'm not ready for community. I know that I have plenty of things that I'm still working out. There's plenty of flesh that I'm murdering. I mean, I'm murking it. And, 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 and it's tough. It's tough. But I want to be around the saints. You know, I need the, 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 I need my elders. And I don't need my elders from a distance. I need my elders in front of me. You know, I need my elders in, in right in my face. You know, I don't mind being kicked in the ass. I've been kicked in the ass before I played college basketball. I've been yelled at, cussed out, and all that. I don't mind that. I want to be right. I, I just want to be right. And I know this is the truth. So if I know this is the truth and I decide to fall away and to, to, to not obey it, then what am I saying about the Most High? What am I saying about you? If I, if I say you're my elder and I don't listen or I say pastor's my pastor and I'm not obeying, what is that saying about you guys as the heads? That's mm-hmm. saying that, that, that there is no esteem. There is no esteem for, for the Most High. And if you don't honor your elder, you don't honor your pastor, how are you going to honor the Most High? You can't. You're finding your own way of doing this thing. So it is my goal very soon to get around some serious saints. You know, and I'm obviously going to be in contact with Pastor and, and, the, and, uh, and, 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 and Elder Becker and as you because I want to be around some serious saints. I don't want to be, you know, I, I, I'm, tired, I, I'm tired of playing this game, if you, if you know what I'm saying, Elder. I know what you're saying. I, I'm, I'm tired of it. Yeah. yeah. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Mm-hmm. I'm, I'm tired right. of that game, you know, and it hurts, you know, at, uh, you know, cause I, <clears throat> I love the Mosai, and mm-hmm. I love him deeply, and you know, without him, my life would be nothing. Mm. You know, I, I I would be doing the same things I was doing, you know. Sins, you know, how many of us have done sins that the Torah would condemn us to death for? Oh yeah, we all should be dead. Yeah, we all hold. You know, and I sat back <laughs> and said, "Excuse me, elder." <laughs> and I sat back and you know, and I and I, I I thought about that and I said, "You know, the Most High have mercy on me." 
And how much am I taking his blood for not, his, 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 his sacrifice for not, by me walking in sin, mm. walking in transgression to the law, walking in transgression. You know, I've heard people talk about that. I heard people talk about this faith, and the only thing is it confirms to me how right it is. The more mm. they talk, the more I know what's right. Yeah. Because you don't hear nobody talking about Christianity. Mm-mm. You don't hear nobody talking about, you know, any of these other secular uh, uh, religions. They don't say nothing about that. And I nope. just want to get my, myself right with the Most High. I am here to obey Elder. I am here to obey Pastor, Elder Frank, Elder Austin, Elder Spinney, Elder Donnie. I am here to obey. And I repent if I've ever operated in any sort of disobedience in, in, in any way. Because I ain't playing. This is, this is my soul. And some people are busters, and they don't care about their soul. They don't care about their children's soul. They don't care about their wife's soul. But I only got one, and, that's, and, and, and it's the one I got right now. Mm. And, 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 you know, I got to have a passion for this thing because ain't nobody else going to have a passion for it. The Most High mm. has already given it. He's already given and shown me who to follow. I, I, I'm surprised at people who fall away. I'm like, where are you going? Where are you going? That's like falling. The hell? Oh, I, yeah, exa- exactly, Elder. Exactly. You know, that's like t- turning in your, 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 your college degree and going back to preschool. No. Yeah. You know, it just don't make no sense. And I just want it in the saints to know, at, at least for me and my family, we're real. And I know the saints all over uh, uh, the, the globe that are real, that, that are absolutely real in following the Most High and in following the order. And in following what the Most High has set up in his elders and his pastor and his teachers and in those brothers that are very strong. There's some very strong brothers that I enjoy getting on the phone with. I enjoy having a word with because they edify. Iron sharpens iron. I'm, you know, and sometimes, you know, I, uh, I'll, I'll throw a slow pitch softball just like I have one of the elders or the, or, or, or the brothers that are, that, are, that are knowledgeable hit that thing out of the park mm. just so they can teach because I need to be taught. You know, I thought I knew, but I need to be taught. And I'm not ashamed to say I need to be taught. Mm. I am not ashamed to say I need to be taught. I need to know because I have responsibility. I have a wife and I have children who are looking up to me. And like Pastor was saying in his teaching, you know, there's some busted-ass men out there who are doing things, you know, or having children ain't taking care of them. They yeah. having, you know, these women ain't taking care of them. Nope. And I just want to, you know, I want to be a, 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 a follower, a disciple of the Most High. And I, you know, I was looking at the word disciple, and it was kind of funny. It was, it was interesting that the word discipline is closely related to the word disciple. Yep. You, can, you cannot be a disciple without having a high level of discipline. That's true. And that's, and that's what I've seen has lacked in, in, within a saints is we don't have discipline. We don't have the discipline to follow the Most High, the way the Most High put it. We don't have discipline to get our minds right, to get our bodies right, to get our hearts right, to renew our minds, to repent and to turn away from that. The Bible, uh, in the it talks about, uh, in, in Ecclesiastes 7, verse 8, it says, Bind not one sin upon another, for in one thou shalt not be unpunished. Say not, y'all will look upon the multitude of my oblations, and when I offer to the Most High, he will accept it. We're not supposed to be stacking on sins upon sins. But I've operated personally in so little fear to the Most High Elder that in my life I have stacked sins upon sins upon sins almost as high as the Tower of Babel. And now that I know the truth, I have my chance to get right. I have, he's been so merciful to, that I'm not dead, and, and I should have been dead numerous times. I lived mm. in bad neighborhoods, and I've done bad things in bad neighborhoods. Mm. I know I should be dead. And, there, yeah. and for some reason, every single time, Elder, that bullet hits the left of me, that bullet hits the right of me, that bullet will go over my head. But that bullet never hit me. Hallelujah. So here I, I, I'm here now, and I'm letting you and Pastor and all the saints know, I'm serious. I am serious. I'm sold out. Um, if you all saints need prayer, I'm here to pray for you. But pray, please pray for me. No doubt. Because I want to make these steps to follow the most high and do what is right. Brother, your so heart's you. committed. Bless you. Bless you, brother. I'm sorry to cut bless you off. Bless you. Bless you. Oh, no problem. Your heart's, bless committed. You. your heart's committed, brother Chris. It'll happen. I guarantee it. You know, the Father has never forsaken those that are righteous. He just won't do it. He yes, will sir. not do it. So 
Um, bless you, brother. I'm going to go ahead and cut you off there. And uh, we love you, brother. And keep at it. Keep at it. And we'll keep you lifting. Yes, sir. We'll keep bless you lifting. You. Saints, y'all have gotten more than a mouthful tonight. Y'all have been overly blessed with testimony from the brethren. You've had your leader, Pastor Dow. You've had your elders call in. You've had heads of communities call in, Brother Vernon, uh, Brother Corey. You've had testimony after testimony, miracle after miracle. Prophecy went forth tonight. Man, if this don't stir your heart, you a dead zombie. Mm. I'm not going to even try to come behind all this and, and put it in a nutshell. If you couldn't get an understanding from what was said from these men of y'all, if you couldn't feel the love and compassion in their heart, then I can do to help you. And see, Pastor, no, I don't talk to him about it. You know, certain brothers show certain char- characteristics and stuff, and, you know, you get to call them out and all that. I ain't doing it. No. Booker, you've been sad for seven, eight years. How am I going to help you in six, seven days? Keep in your sadness. Keep in it. Because if there was a true seed of repentance in you, we would see the fruit from it. Flat out. 75%, y'all. Y'all hear that number? And that's actual and factual. That is statistics. Statistics. Have you want to say it? Man. And that's, that hurts. You can tell it just hurts even saying it. Mm. Bless y'all, saints. That's it for the night. Hallelujah. Elder got to get to work. Hope I get there on time. Don't actually care if I get there on time or not. I ain't going to be speeding. I'm going to chill. Hallelujah. But, man, I tell you, I've been blessed, thoroughly blessed, Israel. I know my heart has been stirred. I know I've been motivated even the more. I know I've been encouraged from the testimony. And I'm looking forward to seeing these signs that's going to follow these real men of Yah, us real men of Yah. Because we got healings and miracles and wonders taking place here too. Hallelujah. People are getting set free. It just it ain't it's not an option. It has to be. Because the book can't lie. Bless you, Pastor Dow. Thank you. Uh, it was an honor having you on the broadcast. Um man, you blessed us, brother. You blessed us, Pastor. You truly did. And uh Elder Frank, I love you, brother. Bless you. Um, thank you again for coming home and, and being with your family. Um, all you heads, Brother Cord, uh, Brother Vernon, and all you brothers that gave testimony, just love you, Brother Rasheed. Love y'all. Truly do. Love y'all. Y'all be blessed. All right? Shalom, shalom, shalom.
look at them looking. 